We now proceed uh, to Deputy Speaker Marcoleta. Marcoleta. Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, you have 30 minutes. Go ahead. Those in plenary would have additional 10 minutes. So 30 Sir. minutes for the Honorable Marcoleta. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. You can uh, allow me a little time to just air my frustrations based on what I have observed during the last hearings and on the basis of the answers being given by our resource persons. Uh, marami pong paikot-ikot, some convoluted answers, prevarications. Alam po ninyo, kailangan mabilisan na lang ito eh. Mr. Chair, I think the, the success, even the extent of our Hearing here will depend entirely on how they will answer our questions. I'm very frustrated simply because not, uh, not only confusing answers na paikot-ikot, yung iba pa are, po, they are outright lies. For example, itong uh, Attorney Del Rosario, when I was asking him about the 100 million given to the Philippine National Red Cross, sasabihin niya sa akin, at dinig na dinig naman ninyo, he was not privy to the negotiations. Para bang hindi niya alam, may hawak akong dokumento that he is one among the three members of the panel. Ang kasama niya, Senior Vice President o Vice President Dr. Shirley Domingo at saka yung certain Mr. Oscar Cabado, Vice President for Membership and Attorney Del Rosario. Pagkata sasabihin niya sa atin, he was not privy to the negotiation between PHealth and PNRC. Sino hindi mo po prostrate dito? Para bang hindi niya alam, I have even the pictures na nandun siya. Kausap niya yung aking kumpare, Senator Gordon. Wala akong sinasabing masama tungkol sa PNRC. I'm only establishing the facts na nandun siya. Pero sasabihin niya sa atin, sa, sa, sa mukha natin, na, na magsisinungaling siyang ganun. Si Dr. Pargas naman, ikaw naman, tinanong ko lang kung magkano yung aking contributions. O after two days, kung hindi pa kita tinex, hindi mo ibibigay sa akin. How can you do this? Yung Manila doctors nangako ka sa akin. Hanggang kayo nandito ha? Are we getting the right answers from you? Yung isa naman, sina, tinanong kita tungkol sa expanded withholding tax. I cannot remember kung sino na dito. I guess kayo po na nandiyan sa... You were telling us pure lies. Ang sabi mo, yung mga health uh, care institutions are the ones paying the expanded withholding tax. Di ba? You were collecting 2% expanded withholding tax. Hindi totoo yun eh. It was Pill Health itself because Pill Health is the only withholding agent of the BIR. Hindi yung healthcare institutions. Okay? Magkano ang binayad ng PhilHealth? Sinabi na rin ng pagtatanong ni Congressman Barbers, 156.7 million. Kayo ang nagbayad. Pagkatapos, magsisinungaling kayo. Ano makukuha namin na, na mabuting uh, sagot kung ganito ang gagawin ninyo? Ang sabi ni Dr. Attorney Del Rosario, isa lang ang department. Parang hindi niya alam, may dokumento ako, apat ang department niya. May I start with you, Attorney Del Rosario, nandiyan ka ba ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Can, can I comment on some points raised by the... You Dr. have Dr. no right. Tinatanong ko lang kung nandiyan ka pa. Thank you, sir. I'm Magaling kang magpaikot eh. And I warn you, kung ano lang tinatanong ko, yun ang sagutin mo. Huwag kang magpapaikot dito. I think, Mr. Chair, we should already advise them that right now, we're working on a complaint for plunder, malversation, and charges of administrative offenses, and so many things. And the final form of this complaint will depend much entirely on the kind of answers that you will give us. Attorney Del Rosario, hindi ba ikaw ang, re ang regional vice president ng Region 1? Noong uh, yes, 220 cases against hospitals and doctors 
were forwarded to your office. Yes or no? Yes, sir. I was once... Uh, yes uh, or no? Yes, I was once uh, Regional Vice President of Peter, Region 1. In 2019, nung hindi na ikaw ang Senior Vice President, teka muna, you were asked to file 220 cases. Ilan ang pinail mo? I'm sorry, Mr. President. The, the ones uh, filing the I cases... I am asking you, uh, out of the 220 cases endorsed to your office, how many cases did you file? The, reg the regional vice president is not the one filing uh, cases, uh, Mr. President. It's the, we, it's the legal office of the region that files Attorney the... Attorney Rosario, I'm warning you, I have documents with me. Wag mo kong paiikutin. I don't care if you're the best lawyer in this country. Pero sa ngayon, sagutin mo lang ang tinatanong ko sa'yo. Because in 2019, nung hindi na ikaw ang senior vice president, ito ang lumitaw. Only three cases were filed versus St. Catherine Hospital. Totoo hindi? I, I don't have the data. As I've told you, Mr. President, the one filing the cases... What do you know? The... Palaging paikot-ikot eh. Ikaw ang binigyan ng SPA. Do you want me to show the document that you were given an SPA by then Interim President and CEO de la Serna to file appropriate criminal, civil, and administrative cases, for example, against several uh, culprits. This is dated November 2, 2017. Hindi mo Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, particular... I am uh, asking you, do you know about this SPA? I, I've known that SPA only of late, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have not seen that uh, th that particular document was forwarded directly to I the am asking you unit. if you know this because this is an SPA issued to you by Interim President CEO De La Serna, dated November 2, 2017. I have During the documents the with me. Yes, sir. I, I've, seen, I've already seen that document. But oh. I cannot remember seeing that document uh, uh, in 2017, Stop. Your Honor. Mr. Mr. There was even an endorsement dated 13 September 2017 for the filing of criminal and administrative case against a certain Dr. Martin Corpus. You know this document, don't you? I've seen that document uh, on... Do you know this TV. document? I'm not asking you whether or not you saw the document. Yes, Your Honor. Paikot-ikot ka. Ito, Mr. Chair, ang problema sa taong ito eh. Despite all this, SPA endorsement, 220 cases endorsed to your office since you were acting regional vice president of Region 1. Wala kang ginawang pinail na kaso kahit isa. For example... It was also disclosed nung mawala ka na sa Region 1, 11 cases are missing. 10 cases versus Elgira General Hospital. One case against Dr. Macario Macaraeg. You deny this? I, I'm not aware of that, uh, Mr. Oh, yan. Yan, yan ka na naman. You remember I have all the documents. I don't care if you remember or you don't remember. That's your problem. Meron kang pinirmi.
Okay? Session resume. Oh, para hindi ka naman baka mamaya mag uh, magmalinger ka na naman ano. Meron kang memorandum number 2018-14. You directed its and every provincial regional office to file at least one complaint per quarter. Itong memong ito ay ginawa mo, Doc uh, Attorney Del Rosario. After certain operational audits, fact-finding investigations nakalagay sa memo mo that there are certain facilities and professionals that are acting against the interest of the PhilHealth Fund. Kaya ang ginawa mo, gumawa ka ng memorandum, you ask all the regional uh, offices to determine and ascertain those people, those culprits, Identify all them. Parang ang ganda, ano? To protect the interest of the Pill Health Fund. What is the reason why you gave them a quota of only one criminal case per one quarter? What is the logic for making or putting a quota or any limitation? Sir, that uh, quota is uh, the minimum. Uh, kasi napansin ko po nung pag-assume uh, ko dito that ever since uh, PhilHealth was created, there were only 11 complaints, uh, criminal complaints filed. And I reviewed the uh, cases and all the uh, criminal complaints were filed by the central office. So there was actually a confusion whether who will file the criminal complaints. So I issued that memorandum, but uh, at the same time, I recognize the limitations of the regions pertaining to their capacity to process all these cases. Attorney so Del Rosario. Time, yes, sir. Uh, alam niyo po dito sa session, si Congressman Marculeta, Congressman Barsaga, hindi na po dapat sila nagpupunta rito because of the COVID. The least you could do, Attorney Del Rosario, while uh, conducting Zoom, at nandiyan naman po kayo sa Zoom, Eh, i-on nyo naman po yung video nyo para nakikita kayo ni Congressman Marculeta habang nag interpolate siya. Oh, thank you, Mr. Marculeta. Chair. Kahit hindi ko na siya nakikita, Mr. Chair, mas okay pa sa akin eh. Importante lang sa akin, sagutin niya ng matino yung tinatanong ko. So, ang sinasabi mo, Attorney Del Rosario, Yes, sir. Ikaw pa lang nag-determine. Gaano ka kasigurado na yung uh, determination no, that's only one filing of one case per quarter, yun ang tama, to protect the interests of PhilHealth. Bakit naman? No, that's the minimum, Mr. Chair. Sino nagsabi sa yung minimum? Who sir, told you? Kasi, sir, Who instructed you to give that minimum? Why not five? Why not ten? Kasi, yung ano ko kasi, sir, during that time, wala po... No, 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 no. sino nagsabi sa yo? Who gave you the guideline na kinakailangan isang kaso lang per quarter? Can you imagine one filing of case for three months? Sino ka para i-determine mo sa sarili mo na yun ang minimum? Why, why, why work for the minimum? Why not maximize the opportunity of being able to determine all those culprits in order to defend and protect the funds of, of Pill Health? Huwag ka na mga twira na kung ano-ano. So, si ikaw pa lang nagdi-determine. Yung pa lang mabuti sa pill health. That is the way to protect the funds of pill health. Kailangan isa lang na case ang ipail in three months' time. Mr. Hindi ko, Chairman. Hindi ko alam kung anong logic meron ka, Tony. Ha? Mr. Chair. Teka muna, I'm not asking you anything. Okay, sir. Proceed, sir. Sorry, sorry. Doon sa Pill Health Circular, dito makikita natin, Mr. Chair, siyang nagdi-determine. Wala kang sinabi na ang board ang nag-advise sa'yo. Not even the board, not even the Exicom. Only one person, Mr. Chair, has the power to determine kung sino at ilan ang ipapayal na case. Sus Mario Josep na buhay ito. Doon sa Pill Health Circular 2020, balikan natin yan, 0007. 
Merong effectivity dun eh. Napansin ko lang kagabi nung nire-review ko to eh. Do you know the effectivity of that particular circular attorney del Rosario? Uh, if I remember it right, I think uh, it's March uh, 20 or 21, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Narinig mo sagot, Mr. Chair? Why did you say it took effect on March 31? 21 yata. Uh, 21 po yata. I, I don't have the document right now, Mr. President. Wala ka palang dokumento. Bakit sinasabi mong March, 20, March 31 what? What year? 2020? Are, are you referring to the IRM uh, circular, Mr. Chair? I am talking about PhilHealth Circular 2020. Ito yung IRM. COVID-19 okay, ito. Kabisado mo ito eh. Bakit mo sinabing March 31, 2020 ang effectivity? Why? Hindi, sir. Ang sabi ko, sir, ang alam ko, March 20 or March 21. Ang sinasabi ko sa'yo, merong effectivity itong circular na to. Ang tanong ko sa'yo, do you know when did this pill health circular take effect? I think nakalagay po dyan, effective immediately, Your Honor. So, so hindi mo kabisado? I'm you tell sure me, I will help day. you. Hindi mo kabisado? Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, it takes immediately from its publication in a newspaper of general circulation and, and take note, three copies, certified copies to have, par to have been furnished to the Office of the National Administrative Register of the UP Law Center. When did you or Peel Health furnish the Office of National Administrative Hospital of UP? When? When did Onar of UP Law Center receive the three copies from Peel Health? Sir, it, uh, it's not my office that uh, is in charge of that. So maybe we can ask the uh, sector. But maybe, maybe, ka na naman eh. You are the executive vice president ng legal sector. You have worked for Peel Health for 20 years or so. Pati lang itong effectivity. Ito na naman, napaikot-ikot ka na naman. Alam mo ito eh. Do I need to tell you or, or give you the document? Ako mismo Sir, ang nag-search eh, nag eh. Sir, doon sa, during the Senate hearing, it was mentioned that uh, it was only on, in June that uh, PhilHealth provided oh. uh, copies to the... Honor. So what day in June? What day in June? If I remember it right, it's uh, June 11, yung document uh, shown by Senator Lacton. Alam mo, alam na, alam mo na yun eh. Magmamali ka pa eh. June 11, hindi 7. Do I June need to correct you every time? I, I said June 11, Mr. Pre, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. So ngayon, alam natin, ito palang IRM took effect legally June 11, 2020. So what happened to the funds that you disbursed prior to this date? What? Sir, it appears that uh, the uh, requirement of the circular was not uh, satisfied uh, as to the uh, requirement to furnish the... Uh, what kind of answer is that? Are you a lawyer? Talaga ba lawyer ka? June 11, nung magkaroon ng kopya, ang owner of the UP Law Center. Meaning to say, doon lang nag-take effect Yung inyong yung circular 2020 0007. All right? Ang tinatanong ko sa iyo, what happened to the funds disbursed prior to this date? Let's say March, April, May, and June 10. What happened to those funds? Sir, it would appear that uh, those funds were not uh, uh, released uh, based on the uh, uh, prerequisite set by the circular on the uh, publication and the furnishing of copies to the owner. What? Can you speak better than that? Do you have a better explanation than that? Napakasimple ng tanong ko eh. Ano ngayon ang mangyayari? Do sa pondo na nirelease ninyo prior to the effectivity of this circular? So it, it is without authority uh, it would appear, Mr. Chair. Anong, anong sabi niya? 
without authority. Oh, so walang authority. Now what happens to you now? To all of you. Illegal. Oh, illegal. Okay. Mabuti yan nagsasabi ka na ng totoo ngayon. Ako yun. Ako nagsabi nun. Honorable Marcoleta. Ah, ikaw ba? Oh, pasagulitin natin sila. Do you? Okay. Do you agree to the statement of the chairman? Illegal. Oh, hindi na makasagot. Uh, are you asking me? Yes, uh, Mr. I agree with oh, the illegal, chairman. Oh, illegal, di ba? Illegal na. It is not... Uh, this not, it did not uh, comply. Tinatanong with, uh, lang kita, illegal na, di ba? Yes, simple, yes, simple, Chairman. Attorney Del Rosario, simple lang po sagot. Illegal po ba? Hindi. Yes, I agree. I agree, Mr. Chair. Ano sagot, Na, Mr. Chair? Sabi niya, yes, I admit, I am pretty I, certain. I, I, Is that correct? I agree. I agree with the Chairman that uh, it's illegal. Oh. Was that properly recorded, Mr. Chair? Yes, Honorable Marcoleta. It was on record. Thank you. Attorney Del Rosario, bilang isang napakahusay na abogado, ikaw ba naniniwala na ang COVID-19, alam mo siguro yung COVID-19, hindi ba? Alam mo ba yung COVID-19, Attorney Del Rosario? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Kailangan mo kasi guru tayo, Mr. Chair. Eh. Masyadong madulas ito eh. Is COVID-19 can be considered a fortuitous event within the meaning and objectives of Pill Health Circular Number 2020-007? Wag kang sasagot ng hindi mo naintindihan. Within the meaning and objectives of Pill Health Circular 2020-007, can COVID-19 be considered a fortuitous event? I think uh, my opinion on the matter, Mr. Chair, is that the fortuitous event is the pandemic uh, caused by the COVID-19 uh, uh, infections, uh, Mr. Chair. Attorney Del Rosario, kung alam mo na sa courtroom lang tayo, ako ang judge, baka pinalabas na kita eh. Tinatanong lamang kita eh, kung within the meaning and objectives of your own circular, kung makukonsider mo bilang isang mahusay na abogado na portuitos event ito, you can refer to your circular kung gusto mo. Kabisado mo ito kaysa sa akin. Eh. Kung ngayon ko lang nabasa ito eh. Paano ka namang hindi masusuya sa ganitong klaseng mga sagot na? Naniniwala ka ba na ito makaklassify na portuitos event? I, yes, sir. I think that's the intention of the oh, operation. Yun. yun ang paniwala mo, hindi eh, ba? So, nakalimutan mo, second paragraph nung rational nung pillar circular, sinasabi ang ganito. Act of God, like floods, typhoons, di ba? Wars, gera, to effect displacement of communities in several endangered areas. So dito makikita, yung Port to event has the capacity to displace a community. Merong physical ano ito eh, merong physical attribute ito, displacement of communities. Under objectives nakalagay, to provide aid to healthcare institutions in rebuilding they're critically damaged healthcare systems. Physical ang pinag-uusapan dito eh. Pagkatapos, hiningam ka pa ng description or photo of the effects of for two, two, seven. Nakikita mo ba yung COVID-19? Attorney Del Rosario? Do you see the enemy? Uh, no, sir. Only oh, the eh, effects. Pa, may kinakailangan ng photo rito eh. Paano mo lilitratuan si COVID-19? Hindi mo nga nakikita eh. Pagkatapos, nandun pa, explicitly, explicitly mention if majority of the claims under the HCI's custody were totally destroyed. Anong ibig sabihin? These are collection of words and phrases that denote that something 
was damaged, physically damaged. Kaya nga kailangan yung IRM. Eh. Kaya kanina tinatanong kita kung klasipikado nga na for 227. Yes, sir lang na yes, sir. Pero hindi mo naiintindihan ang sarili mong uh, circular. Bakit nagsinungaling ka sa akin o sabihin mo na you are not privy to the negotiation between PNRC and PhilHealth? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, negotiation na pumunta po kami doon, kausap namin si Senator Gordon, does not pertain to the amount of the mobilization fund. Ang pinag-usapan po namin dito doon, Mr. Chair, ay uh, yung uh, proseso kung paano makatulong yung PhilHealth doon sa pagpapabilis ng uh, uh, pag-submit ng uh, documents ng Red Cross for liquidation. Uh, hindi po yung usapan po doon tungkol sa ano po, uh, tungkol sa amount ng mobilization fund. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sa paniwala, sa panagay mo ba kapanipaniwala yung sagot mo sa akin? Hindi ba totoo na tatlo kayo rito? Nasa akin ang dokumento, attorney. Yes, Ngayon, sir. Kung pipilitin mo, Mr. Chairman. Kung pipilitin mo na magsinungaling ka pa, nasa sa'yo yun. Okay? Kaya nga sinasabi ko sa'yo kanina, the final form of this complaint for plunder, malversation, and so on and so forth, will depend on the kind of answers that you will give this joint committee. Kasama mo si legal or vice president Shirley Domingo and Mr. Cabado, the vice president for membership, noong inegotiate ninyo kayo ang panel na pagkatapos ano, directly magsisinungaling ka sa amin. Uh, yes, sir. We negotiated. But ano yun, sir? Yung dinidiscuss namin yung, yung proseso, eh. hindi po yung uh, amount po ng mobilization. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the amount of mobilization, sir, ano po yun eh? Top level uh, negotiation po. So, Gano'n uh, katap, katap yung level? Pumunta po kami doon, ah, hindi naman po naman si Senator Gordon po yung uh, intention namin kausap, yung naman po mga staff, uh, yung uh, gagawa po ng mga forms. Uh, tapos nakita lang po kami ni Senator Gordon, kaya po kami tinawag. So, so sige, po yun yung... maglubid ka ng buhangin kung gusto mo. Pero ang sinasabi ko rito, yung 100 million is a clear deviation from the objectives and parameters set forth in your own pill health circular. Because, ang sinasabi ko sa'yo, sa aminin mo hindi wala namang historical claims ang ang ano ang, ang PNRC so kailangan explain mo sa amin ano ang basis ng 100 million sapagkat akala ko ba kasi dito lumilitaw Mr. Chair yung paggastos yung pagwaldas ng pera ng PhilHealth walang patumanga walang protection kaya kapag tatanungin mo sila, ano bang basis nito? Anong guideline dito? Bakit ginamit ninyo yung COVID-19 circular? Pagkatapos wala namang claims dito. Wala namang i-rebuild. Wala namang facilities na gagawin. But you earmark 100 million for PNRC. That's only the point. I wanted to establish kapag ang pinag-uusapan, paggasta, mabilis. Walang patumangga. Mr. Chair, Pill Health, As one institution forgot one thing. Na itong perang ito, hindi sa kanila. They keep the money in trust. They have that fiduciary responsibility to protect this trust. Alam mo, Atty. Del Rosario, yung pera mo, kung po-protectionan mo yun, okay lang kasi pera mo yun. Pero ito, kung kinakailangan triplihin mo o sampuhin mo ang pangangalaga sa perang ito, that is the requirement of a fiduciary responsibility. Do you agree or not? We agree, uh, Mr. President. Thank uh, you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yun ang gusto naming standard sana. Eh. Hindi ganun eh. Hindi ganun. Mr. Chair, may I direct my questions to other panels? Sino po kaya ang pwedeng sumagot dito? I would think uh, Dr. Pargas would have a hand on that, on the 100 million ceiling for uh, Philippine National Red Cross. Yung po yung tanong ng uh, Honorable Malcoreta, sino nagrecommenda ng 100 million at bakit ibibigay? Dr. Pargas. Uh, Mr. Chair, Attorney Labe will respond on that. Attorney Labe. 
Mr. Chair, good afternoon. I'm not privy to the 100 million, but I understand how they funded this project, Mr. Chair, because the expanded targeting testing was computed at 2% of the 13 million population in NCR at the time, Mr. Chair, and it's about, I think, 900 million. But as regards to the advance payment of the 100 million, I was not part of the... I, I'm not privy to that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yung, yung word for the day ngayon is, or the phrase, I'm not privy. Nagbayad ba ng ex expanded withholding tax? Binawas nyo ba yun? Nung ibigay nyo yung 100 million sa PNRC? Oh, you are not privy. Okay. Attorney <laughs> Dr. Pargas, on August 5, 2011, PhilHealth issued Circular Number 011-2011 to implement a case-based payment. Ito yung ACR, case rate, for 23 selected cases and surgical procedures. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. You know, you cannot blame me if I expect, you know, faster answers. Kasi circular ninyo ito eh. Ako, dalawa, tatlong araw ko lang nabasa ito. Eh. But uh, I can commit them into memory if I want to. I, it was signed by our president then on August 5, Mr. Chief. Yeah, that is correct. And in this circular, it says that it should be reviewed every six months. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Every six months. Positive, okay? Yes? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. On October 29, 2013, Peel Health issued circular number 0031, series of 2013, to implement an all-case rate policy. Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. The objectives are as follows. Reduce claim processing or time turnaround TAT. Increase pill health support value. Rationalize reimbursement rates. And achieve technical efficiency for providers. Okay. Isa-isahin natin, Dr. Pargas. Achieve technical efficiency for providers. Did we achieve this? Yes, Mr. Chair. How can you say that? Technical efficiency for cell providers. Katakot-takot na audit observation memo. Inulang kayo ng napakaraming notice of disallowances concerning the payments to these hospitals and care capacity. Pagkatas sasabihin mo, <laughs> how could you even say that? Achieve technical efficiency for providers. Rationalize reimbursement rates. Okay. Have we rationalized reimbursement rates? Have we? Uh, Tinanong nga kita nung isang araw eh. What will happen to the excess payment given to the hospital? Sabi mo sa hospital na lang yun. Is that the way you rationalize reimbursements, Dr. Pargas? Uh, ang, kanyang, ang kanyang intervention is only 10,000 pesos. Binayaran mo siya ng 15,000 pesos. Yung 5,000 na punta sa hospital. That is rationalization. That is rationalization? Sir, Mr. Chair, uh, with regard to the one, ang prinsipyo po kasi nung case rate really is, um, mag, dahil fixed po siya, Meron po talagang mga kaso na maaaring mas mataas ang nagagastos. Alam pero na natin yung Dr. Pargas, eh. we've been there. Ulit-ulit na tayo dyan. But the system is bad. It is not correct because it is not a system where you were able to get back the excess fund para magamit uli ng field. That is the most ideal thing to do. You remember the bus conductor or the bus inspector I, I've been telling you? You yes, remember the, the inspector in the trains? Yes, Mr. Ganun Chair. dapat yun eh. 
So walang nag, nag wala talagang malasakit eh. Dr. Pargas, I'm sorry to say pero ang audit report nyo since that, that time parating negative. Wala kayong naging auditing report na positive. Precisely. Kaya nga itong mga objectives nito na binabasa, walang natupad dito eh. Example. Paano mo na-reduce yung claim processing? Dahil mabilis kang magbayad. Siyempre, wala na eh. Kahit na ba mga sumobra pa ng 10,000 ito eh. Ano naman ang pakinin nyo? Hindi talaga, ang lumilitaw dito sa pagsusuri namin dito, pag yung, pag yung pag-alaga, yung pagsinup do sa pondo, walang masyadong, wala kayong pakialam doon eh. Yung, dis, yung, yung pag-disburse, yung pag-spend, ay eh, yun ang mabilis. Tingnan na lamang natin, Mr. Chair. Ang pagkakaalam ko, the number two killers, mortal, mortality, you know, uh, na, na pumapatay sa tao, ngayon, sa ngayon, number one, heart diseases. Number two, vascular diseases. Number three, malignant neoplasma. This, yung, ito yung cancer. Bakit ang nangyari, Dr. Paragas, ang tatlong pinakama, yung top ninyo na ailments na binabayaran under all case rate, pneumonia, gastroenteritis, and UTI. What happened to the three topmost killers in this country? Did you ever think about this? Did you adopt a study? Mukhang talagang walang pag-aaral dito. Somebody have been telling me na ito po talagang minadali. Ito walang... Now we are able to confirm all this. Even by way of your answers, you are not able to reply to us with certainty, with conviction, and in all honesty, I am prostrated with the answers that you are giving us. Ang gusto ko lang kaya ako nagpunta rito, Mr. Chair, I wanted to see that Attorney Del Rosario, I want to, 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 to tell him in his face how frustrated I am in giving me all these answers, these silly answers. Alam po ba ninyo, Dr. Pargas? Alam ko eh. Nagre-research din ako, eh. maski mahirap eh. Ang daming adverse ko a finding sa inyo. For example, less than a year after the ACR was implemented, na-implement kasi nag you started with 23, so 2011, less than a year after the ACR implementation, PhilHealth suffered financial bleeding. And dami, it was triggered by spate overpayment notice of disallowances. And dami. Let, let me cite examples. Region 5, Dr. Pargas. Notice of disallowance dated September 12. 2,273,000, blah, blah, blah. Uh, audit observation memo, PC, it's Feel health is not protecting. Ito yung observation mismo, ha? Ang sakit nito, eh. Feel health is not protecting the interests of its members and instead benefiting the institutional health care providers. Baligtad, eh. Ito yung observation ng... Uh, I, I'm not sure uh, if Honorable you... Honorable Marcoleto, with apologies, uh, can you wrap up? I am trying, Mr. Chair. But I think you will have to forgive me if I continue. I continuously forgive you. Thank you. Honorable Marcoleta. <laughs> Region 12, audit observation memo, questioning the validity of benefits claims payment of 4.6 million due to lack of statement of accounts from HCIs. Region 2, notice of disallowance dated August 31, 2018, disallowed the overpayment of 56 million. NCR, various notice of disallowances, disallowing the payments of some 54 million pesos. Not only that, Mr. Chair, not only the adverse findings of the COA, ito mga independent studies ito, Dr. Pargas, I will cite several of them. In November 2016, a paper entitled 2016 Health Finance Policy Sector, Report rationalizing case rates was presented to the Peel Health Board. You recall this, Mr. Pargas? No, Mr. Chair. Just to clarify, in 2012, po, I was in corporate communications. 2013 to 28, mid 2018, I am with the corporate affairs. Ako po ay napunta lang sa health finance noon pong 
uh, mid of 2018 as an OIC and was appointed as Senior Vice President ng Health Finance ng 2019. What so, are you saying? You don't know about this paper? Uh, uh, when it was presented po, uh, I was not there during that time. So yeah, the question is, do you know? And you, you, you came to know about this paper? Uh, yun I mean, lang. I, yun lang ang tanong. And Mr. Chair, yung title, just to, sorry po, apologies po, yung title lang po. Ito nga, 2016 Health Finance Policy Sector Report Rationalizing Case Rates. Important ito because these are independent studies commenting and, you know, trying to help you determine the weaknesses of the system. I, I, this is, I, I this think, is on record. This is on record. Yes, you know po, this? I think I've heard okay. naman po. Yun yes. lang naman eh. Yes po. Okay. This report, Dr. Pargas, for your elementary <laughs> education, showed that the fee for service, ito yung dati, this is the uh, old system na pinalitan ng all case rates. The FFS payment schemes average value per claim did not exceed 5,000. So yung old system ninyo, yung average value per claim did not even exceed 5,000 pesos. Ito yung sinasabi ng report. Itong all case rate, all case rate posted an increase of 44.9% average increase in payment to level 1 hospitals. Is this correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, yes. This report also further showed that despite a 9% decrease in the number of claims in level 1 hospitals, nag-decrease, ah? Nag-decrease ng 9% yung claims ng level 1 hospitals, but the amount paid to them increased by 65%. Nung gamitin na ninyo ang ACR system. Ito yung lumabas sa study. Okay. The same report, Mr. Chair, disclosed also that an overpayment in more than one-fourth of the total claims, one-fourth ng total claims in 2016, ay nandoon. And it resulted in overpayment of about 2.6 billion pesos for the same year. Ito yung sinabi ng study. Okay? Ito pa. Also, in November 2016, in Davao City, mayroong in-house actuary na nag-present ng report entitled, eh, this is the title of the report, Towards NHIP, eh, ito yata yung National uh, Health, Health Insurance, Insurance Program. Program, Sustainability, Fiscal Year 2016 to 2025. At the field, it was presented at the Field Health Regional Consultative Meeting. You know about this? I, 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 I would okay. recall, Mr. Chair. So, ang ano lang, ang factual lang talagang, it did happen talaga. There was a paper presented in such a gathering, right? I would suppose so, Mr. Chair. Okay. Chairman. This report, Dr. Pargas, warned PhilHealth that the NHIP fund operated at a net loss for fiscal year 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2015. Okay, yun ang report. We learned kayo na you were on a operating loss. This report also projected that the fund would be depleted by 2019 because the expected operating expense was estimated at 140 billion or a deficit of 140 billion. Ang estimated collection nyo lang naman ninyo, 110 billion. So you have a deficit of 10 billion. Honorable Marcoleta, mukha naman pong uh, agree naman po si SP Vargas sa lahat ng mga binanggit ninyo at tama po yung inyong mga pinunto. I'll give you uh, time to wrap up and the next is the Honorable Rimulya. Sa likod nyo lang po ang uh, kagalang-galang uh, po. Yes, yes sir, pero ito naman si Congressman Rimulya kasi kaibigan ko naman ito talaga. Eh. Pagpapasensya na ako nito. Isa na lang kasi pong... Sige po, Honorable Marcoleta. Dr. Pargas, in 2018, ito gusto, it's important ito mga independent studies na ito eh. A 2018 World Bank paper entitled Striving for Equity and Efficiency, an Assessment of Provider Payment Reforms 
in the Philippine health sector. Meron din ito. This World Bank paper recommended the revision. Tandaan po ninyo, kung wala po kayo nito, dapat, pero dapat naman meron kayo. This World Bank paper recommended the revision of the ACR payment mechanism, noting that case rates fix the amount that providers receive in advance and eliminate the option of uncontrolled balance billing in public and private hospitals. Ito yung dapat ninyong mga... It further noted that when PhilHealth switched to case rate payments, it failed to put in place a cost control mechanism. Ito yung pinakamabigat. Kaya ang sabi nga natin, eh, talagang gatas ang baka na nga. Ito, tatagalog ko yung isa para mas madindi. Sabi pa nito, ang dalawang pinaka-importanting aspeto ng polisiya ng ACR or all case rate, maganyak ang tagabigay ng serbisyo na maging technically efficient at maprotektahan ang mga pasyente sa mga panganib na pampinansyal na hindi matutupad sa paraan ng pagkakadesenyo ng, A ng ACR policy. Ang konklusyon, mismong na-request na gawin para sa PhilHead at DOH at ang payo kay DOH, ganito, the fundamental shortcoming in the way the case rate payment mechanism has been implemented is exactly the same as the PFFS. Ito yung nakaraan. With the ACR payment serving merely as a discount off the hospital service charge. Napakasakit po na ito. Pero ito, these are all, uh, I'd say, mga guidelines na binigay sa inyo, pambukas isip sa inyo. Pero balik ka na kita, ituhuli na po ito sapagkat marami pa akong itatanong pero second round na lang ako. The last, the last hearing, Dr. Pargas, na sabi mo sa akin, Sa lahat ng nangyayaring ganito, the structural deficiency in the system of collecting the balances, kung meron man. Sabi ko, pinag-aralan mo ba? Sabi, ang sabi mo sa akin, aaralin nyo pa lang. Paano nangyari yon? Yung inyong policy, dapat every six months inaaralin nyo. The independent studies, sinabi na sa inyo ang deficiency, even the World Bank. Pagkatapos sinabi mo sa akin noong nakarang araw, aaralin nyo pa lang. You started in 2011. Nine years later, sasabihin mo, Dr. Pargas, aaralin nyo pa lang. What will happen to the fund? What will happen to the fund? Mr. Chair, I will reserve my right for the second round. Thank you very much. Honorable Rimulia, before we proceed to uh, the Honorable... Ay, Honorable uh, Marcoleta, before we proceed to Honorable Rimulia, napansin po kasi ng mga media... Nagsasabi po kayo nung filing of a uh, plunder case. Gusto ko lang po linawin uh, with your indulgence yung pong napag-usapan natin na we as a committee, the Good Government and Public Accountability and the Committee and Public Accounts may decide to be part of the filing of cases against PhilHealth officials and yung pong mga healthcare providers that we deem are part of the scheme to defraud PhilHealth of funds. Tama po ba yun? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Honorable Macoleta. We now proceed to the Honorable uh, Rimulia.